We know that blood flow is really important throughout the body. And a really interesting study just found that taking 20 grams of creatine for just five days will actually improve microcirculation and blood flow after a high carbohydrate or high fat test meal. Now, this is really important in my opinion, because we know reduced blood flow can increase your risk for having a blood clot and is also an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease, sudden cardiac death, and poor outcomes. So let's dive into the study that was published in the European Journal of Physiology. The title of this article is Creatine Monohydrate Supplementation and a Nitric Oxide Synthase Inhibitor Impacts Skeletal Muscle Microvascular Blood Flow, a pilot study. Now, there's a few limitations. There wasn't a control group. There was just five participants. They were taking 20 grams of creatine monohydrate in two divided doses throughout the day, 10 grams in the morning, 10 grams in the evening time. But as you will soon see from these images that are quite fascinating, just taking creatine for five days, like a, a standard loading dose of creatine, 20 grams a day for five days, improved microcirculation and blood flow in skeletal muscle and also reduced some of the oxidative stress that is linked with poor circulation and poor blood flow. Now, this is really important for diabetics and insulin resistant individuals because we know that peripheral vascular disease is a major predisposing factor for having amputations and limb issues and so forth. So, and also I think just in general, like women who have cold hands and feet or people who have cold intolerance, I don't know. I think creatine could be one tool for that and it could mechanistically function by increasing cellular energy production within the smooth muscle cells um, of the arterial system in the peripheral appendages, such as the uh, feet and hands and so on. So, uh, the authors go on to say that impaired blood flow and elevated reactive oxygen species concentrations generated primarily from ADPH oxidase indicate a risk for cardiovascular disease. Creatine monohydrate may reduce cardiovascular disease risk by lowering reactive oxygen species concentration and increasing skeletal muscle microvascular blood flow. So essentially they go into the materials and methods and talk about how there's different reactive oxygen species within the microcirculatory system that are problematic and can reduce blood flow and prevent nitric oxide from dilating the arterial system and so forth. They talk about some other studies that we'll get into momentarily that indicate that creatine could be helpful in this context. But I think it's important for us to all recognize that when we have either a really high carbohydrate meal or a high fat meal, what can happen in the post meal window is there can be impaired blood flow to your appendages in particular in the legs and in the arms and the microvascular system in general. And so they had subjects either have a high fat meal or a high carb meal which is well known to impair nitric oxide synthase. And what they found is comparing the pre-study period where there was no creatine being administered versus just five days of a high dose creatine, there were significant improvements in the blood flow and a reduction concurrently in the free radical species known as reactive oxygen species or uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, and beyond. So I think it's important that we reframe creatine from this ergogenic aid that will improve muscular strength and endurance to something that generally improves cellular energy functioning and possibly mitochondrial function. So I think that's really important. There's some great charts here. This is the amount of hydrogen peroxide in the vessels. As you can see here, there are demonstrable differences between the, the pre and post creatine intervention uh, in the post meal window. That's important to recognize, right? Of course, there's hydrogen peroxide and free radicals and oxidative stress moieties in our body. But in the post meal window, particularly a very high carb or high fat meal will lead to the overproduction of these particularly damaging free radical species. And that's exactly what you see here. But it, but the thing that is important to recognize is after creatine that is offset, which I think is important to understand. And you can see here is the blood flow is improved when we're comparing before and after creatine dosaging. Uh, and so I think that's important to consider that there is improved blood flow within the skeletal muscle. Now, what I think is really important is the authors say that in this current study, the higher amounts of smooth muscle blood flow around the APO, and that's a way to measure the dialysis or the diameter, the amount of, of vessel expansion compared to the control probe was only observed following a high fat or high carb meal. So I think this is the application here. It's not like creatine acts like a vasodilator at rest. It, it may help with the improved blood flow in the post meal window. So if you are say going to eat you know, really fatty foods, for example, maybe you go to get, 
I don't know, Kentucky Fried Chicken or Chick-fil-A on Saturday, right? Let's say uh, and you're going to have high fat meals or really high carb meals, have a pizza day. Perhaps preloading with creatine may offset some of the deleterious effects of, of the vasoconstriction that is normally associated with consuming those foods. So I think that's important. 